Stephanie Hocko is a reporter for News Radio 680 WPTF in Raleigh. Thanks for being on the show. Thank you. Welcome to Leg Week. Well, you saw the state of the state. What struck you about it? Well, I think we heard a lot of themes that the governor has used before. He talked about education, of course, his emphasis on vocational education, efficiency in government, customer service, which is something we've heard a lot, and also the economy, of course, talking about jobs and how to bring those into North Carolina. Yeah, I, every state of the state since I've been here has been about education, jobs, roads, yeah, it's, it's sort of same topics, but never heard much talk about customer service. What do you say about that? Well, it's interesting. I think this kind of shows the governor's corporate background. We're hearing a lot of words that are really out of the business world, you know, customer service, making the government friendlier to taxpayers. Also branding, that's a word that we don't hear a lot in the public sector, but he talked a lot about branding North Carolina, about giving it an identity different from South Carolina, Virginia, making it attractive for people to come here. So words that we really hear a lot in the business world. What is, a, what is it about the, the environment and personality of North Carolina that makes it so different from driving across to Tennessee or down to South Carolina? Well, I think the idea will be at the end of this legislative session that we have lower taxes, right? Personal and corporate income taxes. We have some reform in our incentives packages and just generally reasons why businesses would want to locate here. So get that economy going and get some people working. What do you make of his comments? Because they ended up being controversial by talking about state workers, which I'm a state worker, but... Uh, Bench, uh, seat warmers uh, better be put on notice. They, they want to change personnel laws to get rid of certain people. I don't hear that very often in the state of the state. What do you make of that? He didn't mention your name, so that's a good, good thing. Good, good. <laughs> I think we're hearing a lot uh, about the efficiency of government, and I think that's part of this. You know, he's talked a lot in particular about the Health and Human Services Department and problems there, some pretty scathing audits that have turned up overspending, overtime that wasn't authorized. And so I think that has a lot to do with it, he's, what he's talking about. I think he wants to really shake things up and make sure that we're running lean, leanly and efficiently. The military got a standing ovation. I didn't think it would ever end. Well, uh, there were a lot of standing ovations. Republicans, of course, who run the legislature have been waiting about 20 years to have a Republican get up and talk. Of course, that's important. We have the third largest military footprint in the state, so certainly crucial and with potential cuts coming up, something that he wants to talk about. It was interesting. He talked as well about the defense contracting industry and growing that. Certainly, that could be an important part of the economy here. How well did that speech fit in with what you're seeing the Senate and House leadership in their direction they're taking the state in 2013? I think we've seen them on the same page so far. We're early in the session, just a couple of weeks, and of course the governor's only six weeks into his term. But I think we're seeing a lot of things uh, that are similar between their uh, ideologies. Of course, the unemployment bill deciding to lower benefits, the uh, decision not to expand Medicaid to another 500,000 North Carolinians. So definitely some similarities there, bills that the governor will sign. But I think we're also going to see some battles coming up that will sort of decide what that difference is, if there is one on tax reform and issues like that. Uh, the, the, the buzz slogan of this session is about the jobs, the jobs bill. we got to get more jobs in North Carolina. He talked about tax reform as part of that package. Mm -hmm. Do you see details in what the governor said or do you see that he's willing to talk about tax reform but will let the legislature determine final result. I think there are a lot of ideas floating around out there and, and personally as someone who has been a press secretary in the political world I would say why give details right I mean this is just something that uh, people are gonna crunch the numbers they're gonna look at your policy recommendations and say this won't work this isn't right so personally I would say it might be a good idea to just paint a broad picture of what you want to do with your administration as opposed to handing out some facts and figures that may, people may use to hang around your neck later. Yeah but people out there in North Carolina when they see a politician on TV they want want to see specifics and they complain about it. You're too vague. Mm -hmm. You're not going to keep your word, whatever your word is. Why wouldn't he go there? He had a friendly he had a friendly crowd there, minus about 50 Democrats in both chambers. Right. And of course, the Democrats were critical that he didn't lay out details and specifics. You know, I think it just goes back to wanting to spell out a broad vision, a big picture. Uh, you know, he used 45 minutes, but of course, that's not a lot of time if you want to get into the nuts and bolts about how you want to fix education, tighten up the government, and also bring jobs to the state. I think maybe some of it is just an issue of how much time do we have to get into all of that as well. Stephanie Hawke, News Radio 680 WPTF. Thanks for being on the show. Thank you.